All right, welcome to another little video here. This one's gonna be a little bit brief. I'm gonna be using today Maya to model something organic, something kind of round and soft in shape. I've got this reference image open here of a flint lock pistol. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm just gonna be doing the wooden grip, the wooden body of this weapon here. And I'm gonna be doing this in Maya using a style of modeling um, called sub D modeling. So what I wanna be doing is I wanna be subdividing the mesh that I create, and I want to I want to let the software do the the bulk of the amount of work. Um, I don't want to uh, have to model every single little polygon that's on this and curvature that's on this. I want to let the software do most of the work for me. So I'm going to be creating a pretty simple mesh and letting the software then generate the shape for me. This is a pretty simple method of modeling. All I'm going to do I'm going to create a cube. And just to make things a little bit easier, we're going to increase the contrast. There we go. What I want to do now is I want to preview what this mesh is going to look like once I've subdivided it. So if I hit two on my keyboard, I can see the subdivided version of the mesh here inside of this wireframe version of the actual mesh. Now this is just a preview. It does affect my polygon count, so I can see where I'm going to end up polygon count wise. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to just start simply modeling to start getting a little bit more of this, uh, this kind of look here. So first, <coughs> I will go into my polygons. I'm going to grab the face here in the back and do a simple extrude. And I'm going to bring this back. This is going to form the grip part here, the pistol grip of this thing. So I'm going to bring this back somewhere about here. And I'm going to rotate this you know, somewhere around 45 and then I'll extrude again and bring this down. This is going to form the very bottom here. Now, the way that this style of modeling works is that we just rearrange all of our vertices here until what we're starting to get more closely resembles the shape that we have. So I'm getting a little bit closer. It's almost like sculpting at this point. So I'm going to go widen this out and get that nice big baseball bat end at the uh, the bottom of this thing here. And we're starting to get pretty good. There's only so much you can do, though, when you're modeling in this way. You know, there's not a lot of extra detail I can add or things like that. But this is going to get a little bit more complex as we go. So towards the front of the um, flintlock here, we, we get this kind of wooden foregrip that kind of uh, acts as a bed for the barrel. So there's kind of this curvature that's away here. And I want to kind of uh, emulate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a connection here. We're going to add a single edge. And this is then going to allow me to get a polygon from the front that I can extrude and bring out the length of that particular piece here. Now, while this has gone and uh, allowed me to create this extrusion, it's gone and made some of the other bits and pieces of this a little bit less accurate. So what I'm going to do is grab that new edge that I just made, convert my selection of vertices, and I'm going to scale it out. And I'm actually kind of looking for this to become pretty close to hexagonal ex here. Once it is uh, a little bit more hexagonal, we will end up with something that's starting to read a little bit better. I can see that in the front where the uh, the polygons aren't quite as big here, we probably don't need to go so large with the scale. So I'm going to start tapering this in here. And again, I'm kind of looking for a really nice clean hexagon in terms of this shape. So we'll go and tailor this a little bit more. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer to the shape. I'm going to go and, uh, and make this a little bit more accurate. So right now we're getting this really kind of, uh, it's almost looking like the head of a bird, right? Everything is softened and, and uh, going in between all these polygons, kind of uh, interpolating the angles that exist and, and softening this thing up. So one of the things that we can do in this modeling mode is to select edges like these ones here. This make up the uh, the front face here. And if I were to go to my mesh tools and crease tool, the crease tool is going to allow us to tell the software how hard we want this edge to remain. So if I middle mouse button and click and drag to the right, it'll harden that edge back to its original shape. And that's actually a little bit closer to what we're getting up here. I would also want to do the same with these two edges. And probably, I'm just looking at the front here, 
Probably that one as well. I'm looking at kind of the curvature that's here. Now this has deformed the shape a little bit. It's gone and uh, made it a little bit wider. So I'm going to go and just scale in a little bit further. Because I want to really maintain the volume here correctly. I want to make sure that it doesn't just get out of hand. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take these edges here. You can see that it's flattened out a little bit. So I'm going to go and pull these edges down a little bit. And we'll try to capture that, again, that really nice big round baseball bat kind of shape that you get at the bottom. I'm quite a bit happier with that. Now, in order to make the, uh, the area here where the barrel is going to sit, I'm going to hit one on my keyboard to go back to the original version of my model. This is allowing me to see its actual topology before it gets subdivided. I'm going to grab these three polygons and using extrude and offset, I'm going to bring them in a little bit. This is going to create um, the shapes that I need in order to make everything else that I'm going to make. So we can delete that. And then I'm also just going to flatten these down here. I don't want them to get curved on me, something like that. And now I can go and make the bed that we're going to get across here. So I'm going to take these three faces and holding shift. I'll extrude them backwards until we hit this point here where I will grab my vertices and just scale them together a little bit. We can go and target weld in here to clean this up. So I'm going to go deselect my vertices and target weld the existing vertices in. And then we have just a couple of faces here that we can go and remove. So I'm going to go take this and move it down. And then I'm going to target weld as well in here. Let's do this with a single vertex. There's something a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna cap the bottom here. We're just gonna do this with a simple bridge <clears throat> like this. Okay. So I'm gonna to return to hitting two on my keyboard and looking at my end result. And again, we've kind of got some weird shapes going on here. And that's because I've added a new, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of new geometry, but I haven't actually gone and increased any of it to help hold the shape. So again, this edge was creased. It's now no longer creased. So we're going to go to Mesh Tools, Crease Tool, and we'll grab these edges here. I'll go back to two for my preview, and that'll bring that back to where it was. We'll crease these two, <coughs> like so. And I think the ones at the back here can be creased as well. And there, that's giving us a nice kind of bowl shape here to help hold where that barrel would go. Now, this isn't always going to produce the absolute cleanest geometry out of the gate. It's not always going to give you exactly what you want um, by default. A lot of times there is some things that you need to um, some things you'll need to go and edit in order to give yourself the absolute cleanest geometry here. I'm going to go make a few more changes to this and see what I can do with this shape here. Yeah, it's something a little bit more like that. So one of the things um, that's going wrong with this is that I'm getting this kind of hourglassy shape back here. And that's because the edges that I've creased are now getting wider. The creasing while supporting that edge is actually causing the geometry to hold its shape a little bit closer. And that's why that's happening. So I'm going to need to correct that. Everything else I'm kind of pleased with here in terms of what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my object mode. I'm going to hit one on the keyboard. That's going to return me back to what the actual geometry looks like. I'm then going to go to mesh and smooth. Here I'm going to use two iterations of smooth. And this is going to give me now what the preview was originally showing me, though this is now actual geometry. Once that's done, my edges don't need to be creased anymore. So I'm going to go back into my crease tool and remove the creasing. This is now not done. There, there's some work that still needs to be done here. First, I do have some wasted topology. 
um, in the form of some edges here that run along the shape of this thing. Now they're being used on the bottom here. That's what's giving me that curvature, but they're not being used along the top here anywhere. So I'm going to want to go and clean that up quite a bit. Again, there's nothing wrong with having triangulation in here. And so I'm going to need to go and do that. I'm going to go into symmetry object X. This way I only have to clean one side. I'm going to go to target weld and I can go and remove these edges here to the side or to the back. Now it looks like I'm not using uh, X here in my symmetry. It looks like I'm using Z. So we're going to switch this over. Let's go object Z. Now we should be able to target weld both sides at once, which will speed things up mightily. So that's a little bit better. We'll do the same thing back here. And I'm going to continue that up and around the disc that's in the back here because this too has a rigid edge and not something that I really need to worry about. So we can go and clean this up. I do want to make sure that I'm left with a single that looks good like that. We'll bring these in towards the center here. I do want to make sure that I'm left with a single edge here. There's a couple of places where that's not currently the case. So all of these vertices, they all find themselves in the same plane as everything else that's here. That's why I'm game, able to get rid of these. Okay, so right here, I've got an edge just from the way that this was target welded together that doesn't need to be there. I'm going to hit backspace to remove that. I'll go back into my vertices here, and we're going to go and just do a multi-cut in order to go and put these back like so. Okay, so that's nice and clean. And again, I can still see that hourglass shape is present, and that's what I want to correct. You can see how wide that is there. Now, I've also got um, a couple of edges that run along the length of uh, this shape here. Now, there's a slight curvature here, and so that they are contributing to that. Um, but once they get on the inside here, they're not really doing much. And so I want to be careful of those things, right? I want to make sure none of my edges are <clears throat> are extra, right? They, every edge, every vertex should contribute to the shape of the model. So let's go see what we can do about this hourglass shape. I'm going to look at this from the top. That's going to be the easiest place here to correct this. And you can see it kind of right there bowing out. And so I'm going to grab everything. Let's get out of the multi-cut. I'm going to grab, I'm in vertex mode here, and we're going to grab just the entire front of this thing, and I'm going to scale it in until we're a little bit more straight through here. We'll get rid of one selection. We'll bring these in as well. And something like that is going to give me a little bit of a cleaner shape in there. So now it's not deforming on me. The only thing I think I'll do as well is try and clean this up a little bit here too. We're going to go to Transform Constraints Edge. I can see that this is kind of curving off a little bit more than I'd like it to. So we'll try and clean this up and just soften the transition into this area here. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to go and uh, soften some of these shapes. So wood rarely has a 90 degree corner. Very rarely are you going to see something this hard edged on a piece of wood. Um, it is possible. It is absolutely something that can happen. Um, but for the most part, it's not something that does happen. And so my goal now is going to be to try and make this look more like wood. And to do that, I'm going to go and bevel these edges. <clears throat> I'll start by simply selecting all of the edges that have that 90 degree bend on them that I know is not what I want. So all of these edges here are not going to keep that shape. Um, and we'll go and follow this to the front here. Now, again, I do have um, a few extra edges already in place here. This may make the bevel go a little funky um, only because with uh, several edges here really close um, to that, that 90 degree corner, uh, the bevel may run out of room and it may start overlapping. So we'll, we'll see how this works. We may need to make changes. Let's go and hit the bevel button and I'm going to bring up the fraction, which is going to be the amount. And I can see here that it's, it's, it's kind of stopped me at one. If I go and type in something larger, 
I should be able to bring it higher. So middle mouse button dragging won't allow me to go much higher than that. <clears throat> Five looks okay. I think eight is where I'm going to want to live. Again, I can see that up in the front here, indeed, where I did have uh, a lot of geometry, it is kind of getting ugly. So I'm going to undo this and get rid of the, uh, the bevel altogether. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those edges. This is going to create an end gone that I will come back and correct. And now we can go and select all of those 90 degree edges again. And let's try and put that bevel back on. And again, I just I just want to pay attention here in this corner, making sure that I don't get um, too beveled where it starts getting too large. Let's try two. Okay, I think two is good. Again, I'm getting a little bit of overlap here, so I'm going to have to manually clean that, but I think that's going to look okay. Now, there's going to be some uh, some creation of polygons here that we're not going to want or need that are going to need to be cleaned up. But I'm just kind of looking at the overall shape. I think this is going to work. So let's go and select all of our edges and go to Mesh Display Soften. This is going to make sure that all of the normals are averaged over the surface. And this is going to give us now a much more gradual transition, a softer change in that area that isn't just a stark 90 degree angle change, which yeah, again, you don't typically see that in wood. And now I'm going to go and just target weld a couple of edges here. So that one over there, that's going to allow this transition to hold a little bit nicer. There's also an end gone here that was created, which is no good, but this edge doesn't really need to exist. So I'm going to go and pull it back like that. And then we'll get rid of it here. And then we'll see what we can do about moving this vertex back a little bit too. There's kind of a little bit of a harsh angle there. There's something a little bit more like that. It's starting to read a little bit more soft. Okay. Now again, at the front, we ended up with a couple of vertices here that just ended up going past each other. Uh, just be, again, because of the nature of that of that bevel and where it was. And so I think the easiest way to fix this here is just going to be taking this vertex, the one that I just moved, I'm just going to target weld it up into here. Okay, so that should give me something a little bit better. I'm going to go and just move this vertex too. I'm just looking along the length of this thing here, and it looks out of place to me. And so we're going to go and soften that curvature a little bit further manually. Okay, with that done, I need only correct the end gone that's here. So I'm just going to go and connect these polygons or these vertices rather together like so, and that'll clean that up. So now everything is quad or tri. And there you have it. There is essentially all of the wooden bits and pieces of this thing that are on there. We can go and subdivide this thing further. Again, I can see there's an edge here that the uh, the normals are not uh, looking all that clean on. So this is another edge that could be softened here with a bevel. I want to look for those. I want to look for everything that does have that weird uh, distortion in the shape. That is the, the normals being stretched a little bit too far. And so I can go and add a bevel here. Again, I want to make sure I'm not increasing or uh, adding any end gons to my shape. Um, and it's just about kind of keeping this soft, keeping it really nice and smooth here. We're going to go and set this to a softened edge as well. And again, I can see like there is an end gone created here from that process. Uh, but again, I can go and uh, target weld this here to get rid of it. So if we go put that symmetry back on and go back to our target weld, and I can go and just pull that aside here like that, and that should hold together nicely. Again, I can see there's another angle here being stretched. And so this is another one where, you know, a little bit of multi-cutting in here. We'll go straight across here and just kind of clean this up a little bit. will give us the ability to, uh, to get something a little bit cleaner. I think I'm actually going to go multi-cut and connect these vertices to each other. And then we'll get rid of that new vertex that I added. Which apparently I can't do. So we're going to go to faces here. We'll delete the faces. And we'll just bridge back in there. There we go. 
So again, <clears throat> select all of my edges, mesh display smooth or soften edges. And we now have something reading a little bit cleaner. And every time I want to add any kind of detail, you know, there's obviously going to be a hole in this mechanism for the trigger. I want to make sure that that softness that I'm getting from that bevel exists everywhere. So if I were to go and grab some polygons here, let's say that's where I want the, uh, the hole for the trigger to go. Well, if I do an extrusion and then just move it straight up, I'll scale it down as well so that it becomes uh, planar inside. I'm going to go to faces, or edges rather, and I'm going to select every edge, again, that is a 90 degree edge, something that is, or somewhere in that neighborhood, something that is harsh that shouldn't be because this is wood. And I'm just going to go and bevel it. Now this time, instead of a uh, singular bevel, I'm going to add a second segment, like so. And I can go and adjust this to my liking. And the reason I'm adding that second segment is that it's going to allow me to then connect these vertices outwards to ensure that I'm quadded through here and that I don't have an end gone in the corner. And so that'll give me kind of the opening here where I want the, uh, the trigger to go. So if I go again, mesh display and soften my edges, we'll just deselect this, right? You get a really nice clean shape out of that. Um, that'll work really, really well. And again, this mesh is also going to get subdivided when I create my high poly. So if I go and subdivide this again, um, without too much work here, I'm getting a really nice clean shape out of this. And so, yeah, there you have it. There is the, um, the subdivision model uh, way of creating geometry inside of Maya. So again, to uh, reiterate the tools that I'm using, I'm using display modes using one, two, and three on my keyboard. One being the default way of viewing your topology, where what you have is what you see. Two is going to give you a subdivided surface and a cage showing you your original topology. And three is going to show you a preview of just what the subdivided topology is going to look like. The other tools that I'm using are both softening my edges, making sure that everything I've got is softened. Now, if you've got something that's supposed to be a 90 degree edge, you know, if you're working on a knife blade or something like that, that's supposed to be sharp. Obviously softening the edge there is not going to be warranted. It's not something you're gonna to want to do, um, but softening all the edges on something like wood or rubber or plastic or something like that. Um, even, even on the metal here on many of these components, they wouldn't be sharp to the touch. And so softening those edges with a little bit of a bevel is gonna keep them really nice and clean. The only other tool that I'm using is the crease tool. And again, I go and remove that once I've actually some softened my model. So while I'm modeling, I can go into mesh tools, crease tool, and middle mouse button, drag to the right to crease, drag to the left to uncrease. And there you have it. I hope that's been helpful. And until next time, keep modeling.